What ghosts lie hidden in the archives of espionage? What story might an unassuming item yield when placed under the right light? I'm Alice Loxton, and this is a history of the world in spy objects from Spyscape Studios. As a talented young print designer, Manya Kuhlman draws her inspiration from sources both near and far, strange and familiar, well-known and entirely secret. All of those words can be used to describe one of her recent collections dedicated to Manya's grandmother. Manya is clearly not the first creative type to take inspiration from a grandmother. The influence of the world's nonnas, nanas and abuelas is writ large upon everything from food to fashion. But there is one detail that sets hers apart from all the others. And that's the fact that Manya's grandmother happened to be a KGB spy. My grandmother, her name was Galina, and she's not actually from Moscow, she's from a tiny little village in Russia. And then she moved to Moscow when she was around 18 years old. She was one of the women that knew how to speak English and Spanish. So um, she was sent as a cultural attache from the USSR embassy to Cuba and worked as an interpreter. Cuba's revolution began in 1953 and ended six years later with a new communist-leaning leader at its helm, Juan Fidel Castro. Relations between Moscow and Havana, which had been weak, quickly became a priority for both nations. And so Galina found herself in the middle of a budding love affair between her vast country and the tiny Caribbean island, dispatched ostensibly as a cultural attaché, but with the implicit understanding that she was to keep a close eye on this new, unproven ally. She went to Cuba first in 1957. She was very hardworking and um, she never complained and really embraced the Cuban lifestyle. She was a great believer in communist ideology and she was very patriotic. As a fully paid up disciple to the cause, Galina quickly found herself in the epicenter of the communist mission. Fidel Castro chose her personally to work for him, his own personal interpreter. Fidel really liked, took a liking to her because she was Russian, blonde hair, bombshell basically. She never complained and didn't mind Fidel's excessive smoking of cigars. She didn't drink at all, a complete teetotaler. She kept on returning to Cuba. It was constantly ongoing for six years, back and forth from Russia to Cuba. So now the beautiful young Galina finds herself translating conversations between Soviet visitors and the revolutionary leader, Fidel Castro. And as the relationship between the two sides blossoms, so too does the bond between Fidel and his translator. You would spoil her with little gifts. Which brings us to the items that sit before Manya right now, ready for their introduction to our own little collection. The objects today that I've chosen are a piece of jewellery that Fidel Castro gave to my grandmother and a photograph of them together. It's a shell necklace made with, I think it's out of glass. She also had this conch shell that he found whilst diving and he actually inscribed in the shell their initials. Suffice to say, Fidel was smitten with the visiting Russian bombshell. But what about Galina? How did she feel in the spotlight of the great leader's attention? She was in love with him completely. So one of her loves in a way, so yeah. I mean, in the photograph, it's really quite evident, you know, the way she's looking at him with these loving eyes, completely, you know, completely in love. <laughs> that intensity of feeling, it endured over the years, right up to Fidel Castro's death at age 90. When he passed away, 
2016. I remember we came to Moscow. She was in complete black. She had this little badge with the Cuban flag. She was in tears, complete tears. And she asked uh, my mom to send um, Fidel's brother a telegram saying that there will be never anybody like Fidel Castro. These are her words. The world will never be the same without El Comandante. And what became of Galina? Sadly, Manya's grandmother passed away not long ago. She had remained a formidable and secretive woman well into her 90s, refusing to offer anything more than tantalizing clues about her exotic past as a spy. I think it's because, you know, in the Soviet Union, if you were a spy, you have to be very quiet about it. Otherwise, you can potentially get killed. Once you're in it, you can't really escape it. What can I say? Once a spy, always a spy. But Manya's curiosity about her babushka's hidden life still seizes her imagination. I can't imagine what she had to go through to live this sort of lifestyle, but um, that was what inspired the collection and I basically created my own spy world. Back in 2019, Manya was finishing her degree in fashion at Central St. Martins in London, and she came up with the idea of basing a collection around her grandmother's story. It's a lot of different inspirations, basically, on the collection, but it turned out to be a really fun one, and I really tried to sort of make that contrast from this dull, grey city of Moscow to this incredible life that she sort of built for herself. And it was exciting. She got to meet so many incredible people. The details of that life may remain murky, but they have been vividly imagined in the wonderful collection by Manya Kuhlman. I'm Alice Loxton. More secrets await in the next episode of A History of the World in Spy Objects from Spyscape Studios. Listen early and ad-free with Spyscape Plus on Apple Podcasts and explore the collection on spyscape.com forward slash spy objects.